No, I'm not too bad, thanks. Good, good. Um, looking back at Saturday, I mean, so the plaudits have been have been coming in from all over the place. Do you regard that performance as one of the most complete, if not the most complete, since you, you became part of the Scotland Cell? Oh, it's definitely right up there, yeah, 100%. Um, I think personally, bar the first 10 minutes, um, yeah, I definitely felt like we we were in control of the match for for the rest of for the rest of the game. Um prior to this I, I thought our performance in March against France at home was was probably close to a, a complete performance um then but obviously there was less tries scored and less points uh on the weekend but in terms of territory and, and holding on to the ball I think yeah, right up there in, in, in terms of performances I've been a part of anyway. Was it, in some respects, was it maybe top that France performance, given the context of going to Twickenham and trying to get a win? Oh, 100%. <laughs> um, the history, um, you know, Mike Blair's my mentor, he's coach. Greg even has mentioned it himself as a player. You know, none of us in that room had had been in a position where we'd we'd come away from Twickenham with a win and and obviously bringing the cup home um you know, it was it was pretty special it's a fantastic way to start the, the championship and I, I wonder how does it now set up your psychology going into this game against Wales who of course won yesterday there it, it makes it a titanic match this one on at the weekend isn't it absolutely and from from the final whistle we were together on the field and we spoke briefly about enjoying enjoying the night, enjoying this moment because it's so rare. Thirty eight years, you know, you've got to you've got to enjoy these moments. Um, but then at the same time, it's game one of, of five games, and you very quickly have to realise that you've got another massive challenge ahead of you that you have to prepare for. We can't get ahead of ourselves, um, and the group's well aware of that. Uh, I think teams come into this tournament talking a lot about momentum and gathering momentum and we we've we've mentioned this before uh when you when you win a game or how it can how it can gather some momentum for you and uh that's exactly what we've done now we, we've got off to the best possible start so it's about using that momentum uh back at home and trying to back up now uh what we did on the weekend because if we don't then as great as Saturday was, it it, it means nothing. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I, there's been a lot of talk off the back of the game about the, the issues around some players choosing to take the knee uh, before the game and some players not. You were one of those that chose to do so. Was that a decision that you made consciously? And has there been much discussion in the group since, given the reaction? Uh, in terms of in terms of since, no, there was there's. There's not been any any kind of mention of, of the situation. We were told beforehand that there'd be a, a round of applause for Sir Tom and everyone that's sadly passed away due to COVID, followed by uh, a, uh, a moment of reflection and uh, around sort of racism in sport and, and in general. Um, and then it's very much individual. Uh, for me personally, I, I'd never taken a knee in, in any of the games that I've been involved in before. It was never a, it was never a part of any of the build up to Pro 14 games in the autumn. We never did it uh, on the day. Um, I felt I felt I felt it was right to take a knee. Um, at the same time, could also have, have stood like many of my uh, many of my of the other players and teammates did. Um, and just had that moment of reflection. I feel like there's different ways to to do that. Um, yeah, I don't think that, I don't think you sh there's too much to read into that. Uh, everyone was reflecting. Everyone was respectful, and and then we got on with the anthems in the game. Ali, can you understand perhaps some of the the confusion? and criticism that followed on from that, given the fact that you do see some players standing and others taking the knee. And perhaps is it a, a, a case that, that 
some players have been left exposed because there's not a collective decision around it? But everyone's entitled to their own opinions, uh, I believe. Um, it wasn't something we spoke about uh, in terms of, you know, if you face the hacker, are you going to set up in a certain formation or this or that? You know, it, it wasn't something we discussed. It was very much left down to an individual decision. How are you going to reflect? And um, yeah, uh, I, I don't really know what, what, what you want me to say on the matter. People make their own decisions and, and their reasons are their own. Um, and for us, it was, I think, respectful around the ground. Uh, the anthems then got played and, and yeah, like I said, we, we started the match. Yeah, I was just wondering, given the, the fact there's been so much criticism about it, if it wouldn't be better for it to be a collective, either a governing body decision or a player decision that you can maybe explain before the game or after the game so it doesn't look confusing for people watching on? Oh, potentially, but, um, you know, in terms of changing what what went went on at the weekend, I think that's that's... That's gone now. Um, I think looking forward, if if we're going to take a stance and uh, have conversations about it and make a decision as a as a collective, then that will happen. Cheers, Ali. Just looking ahead to this weekend, we know how much the the Murrayfield crowd can spur you on. Normally, how how strange is it going to be not having that for a Six Nations match? It, it is strange. It's it's certainly different. And um, I remember back in the autumn, the first time when the bus pulled up. It's it's one of the it's one of the brilliant things about Murrayfield is that the the bus enters the stadium and and goes round the side. Crowds can line the road, and you know we get piped in, and it's yeah, that's that's when it hits you. You're you're about to you're about to play for your country and and represent the nation, and it's it's a big moment. Um, that's obviously not going to happen and it hasn't happened for, for a few months now. Um, I feel like players adapt to it and we're used to, you know, Twickenham was a massive ground as well and, and we walked out there and, and, it, and it's silent almost. Um, for us, it's all about creating an energy within our team and within our environment, support staff, uh, guys that are on the bench, um, celebrating mini victories on the field you know that's 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 how we drive our energy and our noise as well um but not forgetting who's at home watching um you know no one was allowed in the stands but i imagine the amount of people then that tune in and and are watching on tv is far greater than what it would have been if people were able to to come to the game or go or go out and about uh, and that's not lost on us either. We know that we've got a huge, huge backing of support back home um, who are with us on the field, even though they're not there uh, in voice in the stadium. Has this spell then made you, along with the records that you've broken and the matches that you've won, but this spell without the crowd made you tighter as a unit and made you kind of grow as a squad? Uh, we're, we're definitely growing as a squad. We're, we're a tight group and... I think with you know the tightness of the rules and the fact that we're in a hotel, training's just across the road, and you finish training and you're straight back to the hotel. You know we're a tight group, and this kind of <laughs> forces you to be even tighter. Almost, you know, you get to know you get to know boys over a period of time. So we're definitely trying to put as much of a positive spin on the situation as we can. Um, and like I said, I've said earlier, um, it's not lost how how sort of privileged we are right now in the current climate to to be able to to play and, and be in the situation we are. And yeah, we're certainly trying to make the most of that so that our performances uh, sort of reflect it. Thank you, Ali. Obviously, you didn't get the the benefit of you know Scotland fans and the in the stadium enjoying it with you and. and Saturday, what, what was your, was there a reaction after the game that, you know, looking on, I don't know, social media or just getting messages on your phone that really kind of hit home and the, the, the pride in what you'd done? Yeah, and it's, 
you know, that's that's kind of obviously first and foremost, we're, we're doing it for each other. We're doing it for our team. You know, we want to get the best result we can. But at the same time, there's a lot of people stuck at home. There's a lot of people that can't go out and have fun, go to the gym even, go training, go uh, meet up with their friends. Uh, and we're... we're it's in us. We're, we're there to inspire and, and, and to make people smile. We want to give someone um, who sat on their couch on a Saturday afternoon a reason to be proud, a reason to be smart, to smile, to, to suddenly have some positivity. If they've had a week where they've not spoke to one or they've not, uh, or they've not seen anybody, you know, uh, and we wanted a bit of, a bit of, a bit of that in us when, when we played. And I hope we replicated that on the weekend with, with how we fought, especially in our defence and um, that dogged side that a lot of Scots carry. And um, yeah, we just want to, it's not lost on us. We, we want to make people proud and, and hopefully Saturday was a great start in um, sort of lifting, lifting the mood. What, what for you has been the, the main reason, you know, the main reasons in your improvement or maybe say over the last 12 months or so as a, as a squad, a team? just just tightness I think and you know everyone's very open we're we're more we don't come in here and it's sort of rugby 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 uh meeting go home uh, go back to the hotel have dinner what do you talk about in the evening rugby is we're we get we we know each other on personal levels and this is coach and staff support staff players everyone mingles together and it's more it's more than just it's more than just work. It's more than just turning up and, and playing a game of rugby. And I think it's a massive change that's happened over the last year or so, where you know we're all we're all good friends with each other. And I think you put it in a lot more when times are tough, when you're doing it for you know for for one of your boys. You know, um, I think that's that's the biggest change. The whole, the whole not being able to leave, not being able to drive home. As a Glasgow player, I used to be able to drive home on a Tuesday night if I was off on the Wednesday, come back into camp on a Thursday. You know, none of that is allowed anymore. Uh, so we have to spend time together and just getting to know, getting to know guys that you've met once or twice, or Cam Redpath who are, who I've never met, and suddenly I'm thrust into sort of six, seven weeks of being with him day in, day out, you, you know, you make bonds a lot quicker. And um, yeah, I think, I, I think that just adds to sort of relationships and connections on the field. Um, and hopefully performances come with that.